Okay, here we go. We're continuing. So, we are now on faith and conversion. Please go and share the message with your friends and family members. Like I said, I want to repeat the announcement. Some of you are watching. Maybe you want to take advantage of this opportunity and, uh, you know, ask, you know, write to us or call us or inform us so that maybe some of the people coming here who are coming to your countries, maybe they will be able to bring the books to you. You know, it might be faster than, uh, you know, waiting to send it by post. The faith and conversion. And uh, the fourth principle is the principle that we are examining now. Principle number four, which is faith can call a oi. Vam je anani prisla la vam nove slide. Anu na veno prisla la nove slide. Ive ne pameyali. Shata fshera no sivone ana ne pameyali shota ana doj na bela sivone prisla. No ne uje pause no uje pause no. That was a mistake that my people wrote here, and they, they, I, they corrected it, but they didn't change the slide. So this is wrong. Just remove can call a passport authority on those things. So, <laughs> so we just said faith, faith can convert. So all those we, call, we can call a passport to the authorities, Russian, blah, blah, blah. so just remove all those from from we to, to to just before convert we remove all that so faith can convert spiritual energy to physical <coughs> product and vice versa so okay, is this as is it not to be uh the normal not fair um she has much it she that so to realize no 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 Okay, can you read now? What this is? Anything we want to claim by faith, we must first be firmly... S sound strong, loud. Anything we want to claim by faith, we must first be firmly established in that God wants you to have in, it. In that. In that God wants you to have it and that it is something which is already yours. So you don't just abuse what authority in the spirit or spirit working with God. The fact that you are able to step out of the, in this, to the spirit and into a higher energy doesn't mean that you can just do anything there. Because it's not if, if you are under the authority of God, Everything you do must also be under the authority of God. You are not just walking into the spirit realm as anarchy. That's, Satan does that. So if you are God, a child of God, God will, you cannot manipulate God. That's why the fact that you are in the spirit realm. That's why it's for sons. So even though you are in the spirit realm, you are doing the will of the Father. Uh, you are honoring him. You are, you know, you cannot, do, that's why we have the Bible. We don't do things that are against the word of God or the will of God. Even if you want to do it, it will not work because God will not do anything that is against his will and his purpose. But when people begin to manipulate spiritual authority like that, they are no more serving God. They are on their own. Anything we want to claim by faith, we must first be firmly established in that God wants you to have it. And that it is something which is already yours, according to God's will, which is in heavenly places. Whenever something materializes on earth, and you have finally received it by faith, it is actually because you have converted it from spirit realm, reali spirit realm reality to earth realm manifestation. Okay, this conversion from the spirit realm to the Health frame. How does it take place? This is just a statement saying it. But the pre spiritual people, Christian people, they abuse that. They just say, okay, since everything is coming from the spirit, we can just proclaim it. Mm -hmm. Or we can just claim it. Or we can just name it. <coughs> or we can just do prophetic of you know something. No, but it's a whole process. First of all, you have to see 
the only way you see convert to idea, and then you have to be able to commit it to paper or write it down yeah. or you know plan it or do something, and then you have to study so that you'll be able to know the process of how to you actually implement it yeah. before you now go to work by faith. You have to put action to it and begin to now bring it into concrete, concrete substance. You have to create substance from it. And then you have to uh, persevere until that thing is completed and you see the best picture of it. Then before you go, go, go and use it to serve. Mm. So it's a whole process. It's not just what Christians are doing, just name it and claim it and just say, uh, uh, give me prophetic offering and just mm. so see it. That's why the country is not developing. That's why there's no change physically in places, you know, because they are not going through the process. They just want to claim. You know, God doesn't work that way. And things don't work like way in the earth. <coughs> Tak and Nazal, read it, please. You have slowed down something of the energy realm and converted it to physical product by faith or you have accelerated to such a high speed in the spirit realm that the things that are in heavenly places at God's speed become more easily available to you. This is because as it is in heaven was converted to earthly realm reality. Okay, so there are things that we can just do uh, from spirit like that, but when you want to, as because of the law that is here, because of time, because of uh, space, because of matter, things need to be constructed. Even God couldn't just say, let the whole light just come up. It has to construct everything. First of all, light, then later on darkness, separated from light, then later on tree. You know, it's this process of building. That's the way things work here. Yeah. What this is not. Many of us think that it is as simple as if we want something. If we declare it enough times, <laughs> we somehow are convincing That's God to give it to us. Like those secrets and things that is self deception. God does not want us to be so ignorant of the law behind claiming something by faith. Do not build something on earth that God has not first built in heaven. That's another principle. You also want to obey, follow him. Mm. Let him first, you know, f you know, find out what he wants. Mm. So you are not doing, you see, the Bible says, thy, will come, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. It's not saying our will should be done in heaven mm. as we have decided on earth. Mm -hmm. And that's normally what happens. Mm. You decide something and then you want God to put his stamp on it. Mm. So you are deciding on earth mm. so that he would he will now <laughs> he will now approve in heaven. <laughs> but it's the opposite. He said that it will be done on earth as it has falls. You see, he is always taking the initiative. He must always be ahead of you. You are his servant. He is not your servant. He is your master. So you are doing what he intends to do. What he has planned to do, what he has, yeah, you know, done already in the spirit, then you are really like duplicating that on the earth. Psalm chapter 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain will build it. So you can understand it from that perspective yeah. of in the, what God has done in the spirit, it's what we are duplicating here on earth. Fifth principle, the ability to convert God energy to earthly realm, earthly realm's physical product is based upon whether it is God's will and whether it is already established in the unseen spirit realm. You know, one of the things that I believe that before Jesus comes will happen here on earth. Okay, when we look at the picture of how things operate in the spirit realm, in heaven, I just told you, teletransportation is the normal thing in heaven. On this thought level, people, you know, do anything. They, they eat, they, they don't need to eat like that. Mm -hmm. And when they eat in heaven, you don't need to wait. Uh, 
you don't need to go to the restroom. You don't need to pass the waste. Because everything is consumed. Everything is used. And yes, yeah, energy. The en it's an undeniable energy. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to eat because you are hungry. Mm -hmm. It's just because it's just a form of variation of pleasure. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, in heaven, like I said, you just need to think. I'm just looking at you, and you are already understanding what I'm thinking, what mm -hmm. I'm trying. I don't need to say. Mm -hmm. The thoughts just coming to you. You already know. Then I could intend to go to somewhere. It's the spirit of light. This, so everything is in the spirit of light. But what I think will happen, because all these things we are seeing now, that I'm talking here, and people are seeing me all over the world, that has been there a long time in the spirit. It just took us thousands of years to get there. Mm. So just like also, uh, you know, we can talk on telephone now, and everybody, that has been there all the time. <laughs> so, in the end times, there will be acceleration mm. of the, you know, wisdom and of the speed, the speed of invention, the speed, the speed on earth is also increasing. Yeah. And the more it increases, the more we get to do innovation and mm -hmm. bring about that quicker. But, and I, I think one thing that might happen before we go, because right now, transportation here, is according to what God has already created that we are seeing, which is plane, cars, train. But what I think my, we might get to, I, it is not God telling me, mm -hmm. this is what I just project mm -hmm. myself, that we might be able to get to a point of transportation. Hmm? <laughs> Bring that. So look, can you tell us what you got? Mm -hmm. Why you are laughing? <laughs> you know, this um, the speed of light is being established for a long time to be constant, but right now it's being said, it's being agreed that the speed of light is being reducing, it's being slowing down. Now, why is it slowing down? Because heaven is trying to get closer yeah. to yeah. earth. Yeah. Mm. And, and so that's why that technology has to increase. Way we can grow. Mm. Yes, we can catch up. And that's why knowledge will increase. And it's a prophecy yeah. Yeah. that knowledge will increase at the end of the day. Yes. And these people will run at us. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so like lightning, mm. going to run at us. So that is what is happening yeah. right now. And I think. So that is a prophecy that the uh, that will be you know uh, increase in knowledge, yeah. and that's because everyone is coming down. I mean, coming closer, and more knowledge is increasing. But if it's going to even be more increase when Christians themselves are able to go into the spirit and accelerate their light, and then just download those things, the technology. So I think our technology will grow to the uh, to the place whereby we will be able to do. We'll, be, we'll have a technology, not like plane, flying six hours, we'll be able to do teletransportation. Tele mm -hmm. I think by the time we, we, we might get to that level, I don't know, Amen. before Christ comes back. Mm. So when knowledge has increased to that extent that we can, I can be here now, and maybe it will not be like immediately like in the spirit, mm. like it's immediate, mm -hmm. but maybe it will be Maybe in one five minutes or ten minutes or one hour, I will be in Africa and come back. Yes. So when we get there, we know that everyone is coming down. Yeah, it's time to go. <laughs> God appears to be opening all our eyes so that more people can be in tune to that energy and start drawing down and accelerating that. No visa. <laughs> yeah, yes. That's just I don't say God told me. I'm just I'm just watching the way things are developing. Yeah, so 
the conversion of energy is going to be more dynamic. So the ability to convert God energy to earthly realm, so there is going to be faster conversion of God reality, spirit reality to earthly realm, physical product, is based upon whether it is God's will or whether it is already established. So there are a lot of things that are already established in heaven. For example, one of the things that is already established in heaven is that cities. God told us about mansions, yeah. about cities, about streets of gold. You know, for a long time, we didn't have cities like this. Yeah. It's only about 2,000 years ago we started having cities yes. like this. But they were there all the time in heaven. Yeah. But according to the way by the knowledge grows, mm. people get understanding they are reproducing heaven on yes. earth. Yes. So when you don't even have that one elementary one in Africa, we don't even reproduce anything. Mm. We, are just, we are just living in a hole of darkness. People are not close to God. Yeah. The measurement of your closeness to God should be measured by how much heaven you are bring producing, it. bringing to the earth. Mm -hmm. So when our people are not bringing heaven down, I mean, when you are, the Bible says, you know, they, they will wipe away tears. So, but you are not wiping away tears of people even around yeah. you here. Yeah. You can't say you are reproducing heaven because in heaven, tears are being wiped away. Yes, yes. So you don't know, you are not connected to heaven. If the, if the Bible says that in heaven there is no pain, you are not dedicating your life to go and look for or sick people, old people. You are not taking care of even your street. Yeah. And you are having churches everywhere. And you say you are having heaven. You don't have heaven. Yeah. Mm. That's right. <laughs> you are not producing heaven. So the measurement of spirituality, just like I said yesterday that my, one of my disciples said, that the way the, we measure weight that if we measure weight by kilograms, that is the same way we should measure spirituality by conversion. How much heaven are you have you converted? Are you con that is what should show your spirituality. Because spirituality is God. So how much of God is being converted? How much of the kingdom of God is being converted here? That's what shows your, not your shout, not your, you know, crowd, not all those things are earth. Yes. I just want to share um, what this scientist, um, Stephen Hawking, yes. he shared something to the world before he passed away. Okay. He said the world is getting so much congested that the human beings will not be able to live in the world. It, to, for me to break it down, he was trying to say there is another world outside this physical realm but we human beings need to advance so much in technology to be able to get access to okay to be able to get access to this world so he was trying to say that the the, the world we live in now is actually going to it, it, the way he expressed it it will catch fire and he said but before we get to that stage, we need to be able to advance so much in technology so that we can transport ourselves out of this present physical realm to this world. Well, uh, what he actually saw that he didn't understand is, is because it's in such a mind, he could use science to really detect, he calculated it. And through the calculations, he just saw what the Bible said that the whole earth is going to be born, this world. Like the end result of this earth is going to be born in fire. Yeah. But that is only going to happen after everybody has been caught up, after rapture, and after the second coming. And then there will be a superior land, earth, and a new earth, and the Bible says it's a new earth and it's a new heaven. So that's what he was just seeing in the spirit, in the spirit through calculations. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Your effectiveness to build on Earth is based upon what has been built in the unseen energy realm. Okay, you got that already. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on Earth will be bound in Heaven, and whatever you lose on Earth will be loosed in Heaven. So it has to be done. Okay. Your partnership with God is proven in the fact that he has said it and it is so. He has established it in heavenly places. 
So you must convert it to physical product or action on earth. Are you getting all that still? Yeah. Okay. This is what true co-laboring with God looks like and what true apostolic ministry on earth can be like. Light and conversion. The accompaniment of light with the process of conversion is a key to understanding conversion and a very crucial aspect of understanding God. Acceleration for the purpose of hearing the voice of God leads to true revelation. You understand that, no? Yes. The last part. Acceleration for the purpose of hearing the voice of God leads to true revelation. Acceleration, it means Spirit. moving the spirit. spirit. Yeah. Increasing your speed. speed. Getting to the spirit realm. Moving the spirit. About walking in the spirit will lead you to easier access to the voice God. of God. Just like we saw with the transfiguration, transfiguration story. Biblical examples. Moses. Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 to 6. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. You see, even back then, God wants the whole nation to be kingdom of priests. He's, he doesn't want them to have the paganistic concept <laughs> that they settled for. Because he said, no, give us a king. Let's ask one person through whom we will be communicating to you. But that's not what God intended for them. God's intention is that no, nobody is a king, no middleman. All of you are children. All of you are kings. Are, you are direct relationships. So that's what he was saying. Yeah. But, but today, we are still practicing the paganistic. Because in paganism, you need the powerful man. The powerful witch doctor. That can assess the spirit realm or God. And you are just nobody. And that is still what we are practicing until today. You could say that Moses, or even the priest, had a passport from God to step into the accelerated process of conversion in order to fellowship and encounter the things of the Spirit and God himself. Moses is having highly unusual experiences with God that if he were subject to earthly laws and principles, he would never be able to handle. While fellowshipping with God, at this accelerated speed... So you see the fellowship with God, not just prayer, mm -hmm. walking with God, fellowshipping with God, intimacy with God, is acceleration. Mm -hmm. Speed as well as the spirit. You get to the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that in in intimacy bring, you know, infects you with the light of God's spirit. Mm -hmm. So you, you even accelerated further mm -hmm. through that fellowship. He had almost... Uh, he had almost unapproachable light shining from his face when he would come you know, down. One of you mentioned it today, that Moses, when he was, without knowing that I was there going there, right? Okay. He had almost an unapproachable light shining from his face when he would come down from meeting with God. Moses literally was able to have such a powerful fellowship with God because he was accelerated to the point of light speed. When he would ascend the mountain to meet with God, he would step into a place of such acceleration that any animal or person who would dare approach the mountain, that place of acceleration would actually die. Because of the light. Yeah, so, and you saw the acceleration, like I was showing you, that for us it should be the normal place where we dwell. And like I was showing you that I was coming in and out, right? Yeah. Today also. Yeah. Sir, I just want to ask not to miss something that you Okay. That word is appearing over and over. Okay. And in, in physics, you have two words that have to do with speed. You have velocity 
and you have acceleration. Mm -hmm. Velocity is a normal process. Mm -hmm. Acceleration is exponential. Beautiful, beautiful, very good. Because your yeah, acceleration is only possible in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's possible also other ways when you accelerate, you know, technically. But uh, it's not, it not, it's a higher degree. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. For Moses to be on the mountain and not eat or drink for 40 days is a physical impossibility unless he was able to function at God's speed. The written thoughts and laws of God were granted to Moses in that place. So he was able to hear easily and assess what is already in heaven and to commit it on paper. You see, and which also tells us that solitude is a powerful way to, uh, for acceleration mm -hmm. and hearing God. Solitude, fasting, mm -hmm. because that, those things, because what happens on normal, in normal circumstances is that our flesh, after Adam and Eve sinned, because before they sinned, before Adam and Eve sinned, they were made, they were created to live from inside out, mm -hmm. from the spirit out. So when they were functioning by their fellowship with God and what God tells them. But before Satan could deceive them and make them to fall, he needed to distract them or brainwash them so that they would lose sight, touch, just like Peter when he was walking on water, mm. lose touch of the spirit mm. and begin to focus more on the water and the the earthly physical thing. Mm -hmm. So the, the strategy that Satan used was to show the fruit and the beauty of the fruit. Mm -hmm. So he said, do you see how it, how it is good to foretaste, how it is the fruit? So he was now making her to be outside oriented, mm -hmm. outward oriented, mm -hmm. losing touch of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So when you now focus more on things that are coming from outside, you let go here. Yeah. Mm. Just like Peter also was focusing on the wind yeah. and let go of the touch of God. So when you begin to be... But, but the problem with man is that most people think uh, what happened in Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man, we normally think that it is, it is the... Um, that the fall of man is sin, connected to sin, which is sins. What happened is the sin there is not is not normally is not the action. The sin that happened there is loss of trust, lack of faith, lack of belief. So they lose, they lost, just like Peter lost. The trust in Christ to make that made him to walk on this I on a Goliath ground. People, you know, Adam and Eve also lost trust of God that has mentored them that they have been walking with the let go. And instead of walking in faith in the God, in the internal leading that has always been there for them, they are now saying, Why should I go be to be, you know, using they announce I'm seeing this one physical. Yeah, yeah. So that is the biggest sin. The fact that they now ate is later on. is the consequence of the... <laughs> the sin that has happened has happened before eating. So eating is only the thing they did after they... So, but when we think that it is what they did, so that's what makes us to be religious, to be saying do's and don'ts. Mm. And that's what Jesus counsels in the New Testament. It's not about what you did. Mm -hmm. He said even if you look at a woman, mm. so you have not done anything. Yes. You are not, and he too, he did something, he beat people and it's not the same. Mm. He ate in Sabbath and it's not the same. It's not about what you do only. It's about what is happening in your heart. Yes. You have lost connection. Yes. It's not the thought. It's a connection. You know, sin is anything that cuts that your relationship. Mm. So in this case, the, you know, you know, Satan was able to make them to the, look at the outward things that led to cutting of relationship, breaking of connection. Mm -hmm. 
So sin is anything that breaks your intimacy, your connection with God. So for example, it could be sin. In the, I mean, it could be physical thing that I do, but it doesn't have to be physical thing that I do. Because for example, when I begin to think about you know, a woman or something like that in my mind, even though I have not touched that, but in my mind I've already you know, connect, disconnected with him. I'm not connected with him. I'm connected with the person, with the woman. You know, he that gets together with a prostitute is connected, is one with the person. But so what God is interested in is your oneness, your ability to be working with God. But so what cuts that relationship, your connection with God is the same. And that could be your love to your parents, your love to your husband, your love to your wife. Anything that makes you to be more connected to something else than to the spirit is a sin. So that is sin in this angle. So, for example, he said, uh, if you don't deny your father and mother, you know, and it's because those are things that you are attached to. Anything that breaks your attachment, we, that is the sin. So, but when we look at sin as do, as action, that will become legalistic. You know, they don't do this, don't drink. But Jesus was trying to break that. No, it's not what you drink or what you take that defiles a man. It is what comes out from there. What are you connected to? So are you connected? But our relationship, we are supposed to be attached to God, to be working. So anything that brings you closer to the relationship with God is what you should pursue. And anything that, you know, that separates you is that that is sin. I don't know if you are getting yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. sin is anything that breaks your relationship. Yes. For example, when Jesus was violating Sabbath, he was actually violating it to bring people closer to yes. God. So it's not a sin. Yes. When he was beating those people, he was actually beating them so that they would not go to hell. So it's not a sin. It's not the action. But if you are going to look at the action and just think, that it is action, then you become legalistic. That's the definition of legalism. Ah. I don't know if you are getting You want to say something? Something just came to my mind as you were saying that. So when they were in the Garden of Eden and the tree of life and uh, knowledge of good and evil, yes. then when we now come to the New Testament where... Paul, I can't remember where it was saying anything that raises itself above the knowledge. Above the knowledge. Uh -huh. And that was what happened there. So that cuts them off because by the time... Because it has raised his knowledge, I mean, his head against the knowledge of God. Yes. So that has cut relationship, yes. the unity yes. between you and God. Yes. So anything that separates you, uh, cuts your relationship, that is the same. Yeah. It could be your love for your wife, it could be your work to your work, it could be your job, it could be money, it could be power, it could be your church, yes. it could be the yes. ministry, yes. it could be membership. That's why it's a feed my lap, but don't love them. Love me? Do you love me? Yeah, because you could, if you don't begin to love the ministry and love people, you are now, that is now the thing that is also causing you from... I don't know if you put that. Yes, yes. So yes. action comes later, yes. but it is what has happened within that. So the biggest temptation that Satan does is to distract you from that your relationship. Mm -hmm. Anything could be used to that intimacy to disconnect you, and that's what he did for Adam and Eve. He made them to be distracted, to be disconnected to that, and look at just like with Peter. He's also distracted. He made wind to be coming. So he distracted him from that relationship with the father. So that connection is lost. That is the sin. And that's why he began to fall. Yeah. And that's why they fell too. Because they disconnected with that something. And because they were looking at... Now listen to where I'm going to. We are not made. It was from that moment that they began to look at the things outside. The, the fruit and something like that. That is when our, our, our chemistry changed. We began to be oriented to five senses. senses. And now we are now being led and guided to use five senses to determine truth. Mm -hmm. But really, the way it was before that particular instance is that we were living from the knowledge of God, from the understanding of God, from the relationship of God, from inside, from the spirit out. And it is now the spirit that determines. That's how they were able to name all the animals. Because it was coming from the knowledge was coming from the spirit out. Mm. You know, that's why we are able to manage the earth. The knowledge was coming from inside out. Mm. So what we are, our goal now is to get to a place whereby our realization, our intimacy with God is, is so accelerated, is so much 
on a higher level that we are doing everything from the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. We are living our life from inside like out house. rather than outside, outside in. in. The reason why we need the five senses is to be able to establish mm -hmm. here on earth what we are getting from inside mm -hmm. from the spirit realm to now bring it out. That's why we need all the physical something. Wow. But not so that the physical reality will dictate to us how what we should do, how we should do it. But the instruction is coming from inside mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And that's why our, the spirit of God is in our spirit. Inside how so the that's why you need the acceleration intimacy with god fellowship with god prayer you know solitude fasting and those, because those things strengthen the spirit man mm -hmm. it strengthens the inner man so that the five senses and the outward world doesn't have, have dominion over you mm -hmm. you are the one that has dominion mm -hmm. so your higher sensation and sensitivity is always higher you are always putting this in aside and you can always come in and go out and you know exactly where your spirit is and where your you know, outside world is but most christians don't know anymore where their spirit is they don't even feel their spirit because they are so much used to being oriented at physical world and what they see outside that they don't even aware they are not even aware again so but what would the goal now is to strengthen that to reverse that so that you now begin to live your life on a daily basis from inside out or from the spirit out I don't know if you get in this. Yes. Yes. So it's the problem that uh, there are so many unconverted Christians. Ah, well said. I like that. Well said. Well said. Because real conversion is that reconnection with the Father. But as we call ourselves Christians, but we are not connected. Because we are still living like most, I mean, Adam and Eve started to live from outside in. So outside became the dictating and the commanding force to them. It dominated. They are now dominated instead of dominating. Yes, Amaria. Pastor, what or was it too complicated for you Pastor, people? Oh, Pastor, what you are saying now, uh, by Pastor Bosse says somehow yesterday, she was Sida. giving us an example. Okay, sorry. She was giving us an example so, where she went... Mm -hmm. Go ahead, yeah. She was giving us an example where she have, she was having an issue. Then she went to meet somebody, uh, a, a woman, a mature woman, for an advice. The woman told her that no, I don't operate in that uh, no. research. Right. What am I trying to say? In the Bible, Paul gives us a good example in Philippians for it, for you to be strengthened and begin to do the mind of God. Think of everything that is good, positive, positive, positive be kind, yes. That is to help you. Beautiful. Because those things are positive energy. Yes. They are on the spirit level and the higher level. Yeah. Beautiful. Well said. Well said. Yeah. So can you read that again? For Moses to be on the mountain and not eat or drink for 40 days is a physical impossibility unless he was able to function at God's speed. The, right. The written thoughts and laws of God were granted to Moses in that place. Enoch. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. You understand that, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. God, we already discussed a bit yeah. about it. Conversion can explain the disappearance of Enoch from the earth. Enoch walked with God and was not because the Lord took him. Could it be that Enoch disappeared because he fellowshiped with God at such an accelerated degree that he was taken into the God speed realm altogether? That's yes. exactly yes. the explanation. Yes. Hmm? Elijah and Elisha. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> Second Kings chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire 
and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. <laughs> so he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and, took the, and tore them into two pieces. Do you people know what has happened there? Okay, let's read first. Not only can conversion account for the many exploits of the prophet Elijah, but also him being taken up into heaven. Elisha was asking for the double portion of Elijah to be placed upon his life. Mm -hmm. Elijah says, you have asked a very difficult thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taking from you, you will receive it. The proof of Elisha's qualification to receive the mantle of Elijah was determined by whether or not Elisha had learned to convert to such a degree that he could see and observe in this light speed realm. And he was tutored. And the way he was tutored is that he kept on following Elijah. And people were telling him, oh, do you know that your, uh, some, uh, your master is going to be taken today? Do you know this? And he was saying, you know, fix your eyes on me. That is discipline. Mm. Fix your eyes on me. If you can follow, you know, many people were following him before. So there are sons of prophets, all the bad people, not only him, but all the people were dropping off, dropping off, dropping off. But he was training his eye, his himself, his spirit mind to move on the level because he was keeping his eye on him, to, on Elijah, to, coming closer to that level, coming closer to that level. You know, different times, was, was, maybe it's now, it's now, but he's not blinking. He's developing his spirit, building a strong spirit. Despite all trials on the road, mm. you know, and he was, he kept on his, because he was under the soil. Mm. So he was, he had developed his spirit man to, he has released himself. It is not that he got a man, to, it's not the paper, the yeah, yeah. something, because he, what he saw, the spirit he has developed, the realm he has entered into. Is what did the miracle, not physical mantle. The mantle is later on because the, he had been able to. See. The fact that he saw means that he has developed his spirit. He has accelerated. So it is that he has stepped into that vapor or what do you call it, vapor level. That being on that level itself is what allows him to be able to operate in that realm that is Elijah operated even higher. Because he was able to see. I don't know if you are getting it. Yes. Because when you listen to Christians preach, they create an impression as if it's the physical material, inanimate thing that matters. No, 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 no. It is the acceleration. It is the spirit realm where he stepped onto. The ability to see that is what, what confirms the fact that he has been able to convert himself. He has built a strong spirit to be able to relate on, on that level. And that's from where he could now operate. So that was by virtual scholarship. It's for, yeah, it's discipline. Okay. Not just following, but, the, you know, because it's following is the process. Mm -hmm. Following him is just be, uh, bringing him along. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the, this, you know, it's easier when you have an example. Mm -hmm. So he's following him. That made him to be able to discipline himself. Mm -hmm. Just by himself would have, you know, work, mm -hmm. but because he's so determined to keep on following that gave him the discipline to be able to keep on following until he walked. He didn't even notice when he had stepped out of natural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He thought he was just looking at it. Mm -hmm. But he was in his environment. Mm -hmm. An environment do, do influence you. Just like you people are listening to me now, mm -hmm. sitting here. You people are coming to a higher level. Mm -hmm. yes. When you come back home, you will discover that, ah, it's no more the same. Yes. Because yes. you are carrying you along. Yes. Yes. Just like Jesus carried along the yes. disciples. Yes. So you being here, the same thing was happening to him. He was following him, and that was 50 percent. He was carrying him along, and he didn't notice when he carried him to the realm. Mm -hmm. That's why he was saying, "If you will see, mm -hmm. so will you be able to follow to keep on? I'm carrying you along, mm -hmm. but will you be able to step on, step out there? Mm -hmm. You will not even know when you have stepped into that anointing, mm -hmm. into that realm, and that is the anointing." Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> what else is up there? <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. I'll continue. Mm -hmm. Let us suggest that Elisha's mentorship all along was in learning how to do the exploits 
of his mentor and learning how to function in the Godspeed realm. Yeah, so he was saying, if you see me, you know, for you to see, it means you have already entered into Godspeed realm. But if you don't see, you didn't quite follow. You didn't get there. You have not developed yourself together. You have not stepped out there. But he was able to see, so he was diligent to he had been carried along into there. If you see, it's not upon me. He didn't lay hands on him. He didn't do anything. It's not upon him. It depends. It depends on you yourself mm -hmm. to be able to follow through. Mm -hmm. Elijah's journey to heaven was based on the law of conversion because no physical body could be picked up by a fairy chariot overrule the law of gravity or even be able to stand in the presence of God in the Godspeed realm. The scripture has also no recorded reference to Elijah's physical body dying or being buried. Elijah's physical body accelerated to such a degree that it disappeared altogether and entered a <laughs> realm where God is. Mm. You, see, you remember the what we said? What, whatever happens to higher energy, it is so to say. light, right. light speed squared. Right. What happens to the physical element? You can't see a remnant. It becomes what? Invisible. So you now understand the explanation why you couldn't see the. Yeah. It was transported to the higher energy level, speed level. In fact, mm -hmm. the focus is not on... The, I'm now seeing the implication, of, the implication of the mantle was to see the separation yes. of, the of the realms realm of the, of the uh, spirit yeah. from the realm of the material. Yeah. That was just the difference. Mm. It's not power, it's not mantle doesn't make anything. Mm. Just trying to say, you are still here, mm -hmm. and this is your, you know, this is just on that level, and your master has gone to another level. Wow. It's a division, separation between two realms. And that's the proof of that division. Yeah. So he, he was in, still in this uh, physical, realm. physical realm, but he was able to see the spirit realm. Yeah. So the mantle is just an indication that you are still here, yeah. but you have, you have seen something higher. Yeah. You are still where your master used to be, but you have seen into the spirit. Yeah. Now, you see into the spirit, from that spirit you operate. Yeah. And that's why he started operating the gospel realm. Mm -hmm. Elijah's physical body accelerated to such a degree that it disappeared altogether and entered the realm where God is. God wants to be understood. You see, God is not a mystery. He doesn't want to remain a mystery. No. He wants to be understood. Okay. Some aspects of science can prove biblical truth and the Bible can prove science. <laughs> and that's what we have been doing this week. Huh? This is something the religious mind does not want to entertain. Albert Einstein was able to discover principles that connect heaven and earth, the science and spirit. Mm -hmm. This is because God wants to be understood by man. Too often we put God in a religious box, making mm -hmm. him so far from us. This in turn makes him feel very impersonal. Whereby it's totally the opposite. It's supposed to be intimacy. He desires intimacy with us. It's religion that wants to make us separated. Religion itself could be that idol. Could be the same. Yeah. Because religion separates you. It's the same. Just like the apple. Anything that divides your relationship, separates you from intimacy with God, is the same. Sixth principle. Huh? What? What? I've not read it. What is it? God seeks to understand man for the purpose of relationship and to reveal his greatness. God desires. God seeks to understand man. You see, I, even me, I got lost. God seeks to understand man. Man seeks to understand God. No, 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 no. The word supposed to be here is God seeks remove everything there. Remove from seek. Remove from seek to purpose of. Remove all that. You, don't worry. 
but it's just supposed to be what is supposed to be there is God seeks relationship with man yes for the purpose of revealing his greatness yes. can you see it now God seeks relationship with man for the purpose of revealing his greatness you got it now okay that's it <clears throat> okay. God has made us in his image and likeness and out of his desire to have relationship with us. Mm -hmm. He wants us to discover him and he wants to be understood. Yes. God is a God of laws, principles and relationship. Mm -hmm. Heaven, in fact, is a place where God is continually revealing himself in his fullness to those around the throne. The law of conversion allows us and to... And that's why we need that relationship, yeah. ongoing. Mm. The law of conversion allows us to understand that heaven is operating at a completely different speed than the earth realm. God's invincible ideas and thoughts function at that speed. The seventh principle. Every prophecy, dream, vision, and revelation is invisible and is in God who operates in the realm of invisible energy. We will call prophecy, dreams, and revelation God thought or light. If that's when they are original, not the ones we are seeing in Nigeria. <laughs> it is the believer's job, <laughs> along with the help of the Holy Spirit, to slow down God's thoughts and convert them. So battery, the, the battery is dead. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So we need to we will go change the battery for him. Why I read, I keep on reading. It is the believer's job, along with the help of the Holy Spirit, to slow down God's thoughts and convert them to physical product on earth. That's what I explained to you in the beginning. When you are relating with God, you get thoughts, ideas or you see, or you hear. So what the mind, the role of the mind, is to now develop that into picture, or to do research. And when you do research, you get to hear, I mean, you get to get more information and paint a clearer picture. And, it, and then you commit it to uh, a sketch, or uh, a, pro, a graphic, or uh, you write it down. And that is the process of slowing it down. Because it's coming from the speed of energy, higher speed of God, energy, the speed of God. Then you commit it down, you are slowing it down until you now begin to the process of establishing it through understanding, which is building or constructing it, is even slowing down. And that's why you need the hope, the patience, the endurance, and until you now produce the product before you can now use it as a service to humanity. Through, okay, you are ready. Through spiritual exercises, we, we as sons and daughters of God, of the King, have a responsibility to not only discover God's thought, which comes in the form of revelation, but we must convert it to earthly realm as well. Production processes. Steps taking to convert raw materials into products. The tree as a raw material. When processed... So that's what I tried to explain to you yesterday, that we worship God when we are able to subdue, are able to subdue the earth, anything that is already produced by God, when we're able to convert it or subdue it to glorify God or to derive the glory from that thing, you know, to God, that, that is a worship of God. When somebody commits the tree into that table, that is glorifying God right there. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the glory of the tree has been brought to the feet of the master. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need education. Mm -hmm. And that's why you might get the idea of a table, but the getting the idea of a table is one thing, but the ability to actually do it needs knowledge. It needs skills. That's why we need education. Yeah. It needs, uh, you know, research. 
That's why you know how best to do it and things like that. So this is giving God the glory. You see the process. So for example, you get the idea. You see in the, the diagram, process, you commit it down. You draw it, yeah? Before you go to work by faith, you know, before you action, that now produces it. Are you getting it, guys? So this is what God said we should be doing, conversion process. So either we are converting physical things that God has already created, getting ideas, you know, putting it in drawing, and then going to work to produce it, or we are getting directly, not from the physical things alone, but from spirit realm. But the physical things that we can already see, that is also, phys you know, we can also use our eyes, whatever we hear, whatever you see, they could also be getting an idea from there to create something. But the higher level even is from the spirit realm to create products. Eighth principle. <coughs> Whenever you receive revelation from God, you have received light. Okay, because that, that, no, you understand that, right? Yeah. Knowledge is light. Revelation, understanding, yeah? God's thinking and ideas are functioning at such a high speed. Once one, we slow them down. You slow them down by converting them into ideas, and then into pictures, and then into diagrams or whatever you need to do, or into writing. Or that's all the process of slowing them until they become materialized. That's the process of slowing it down then becomes concrete. Just like this water, it, it was vapor. Mm -hmm. You convert it, slow it down to become liquid. water, liquid. And then you keep on slowing it down to build it, structure, you put structure in it, and then it becomes block. So that's how everything in this world you have seen are created. But everything came from light. So at the end of the day, you know, it is just now that quantum physics, quantum physics started knowing that material things are not real. It is just now. In fact, some people are still arguing that quantum physics is not real. How is it that everything is not real? That everything, because they are just getting to this thing that I am already in. We are already in. They just said everything is just, everything is nothing. You know, and I'm going to, I think I'm going to develop that in... January HMT, maybe I'm thinking so, maybe not, but if I'm going to develop this, I might get there. That everything is not real. By the time you destroy everything, everything will disappear. Atom, then with all those things, you will come back to spirit, they disappear into light. Everything gets back to the light. Because everything came from that light. But we know where the light came from. Let there be <laughs> And it's just now that quantum physics just goes into that. That nothing is real. All the physical things you think now, they are not real. Because they were committed, just like the vapor, which from the original, committed to water level, then to the ice building. That's how we get ideas also, committed to, paper, to pictures, to paper, to drawing, then to bricks, to building, you know, just like the ice also, to concrete building structure countries that we see the same way. Okay. Can you say, read that again? God's thinking and ideas are functioning at such a high speed. Once, one, we slow them down. Two, we seek them through spiritual exercise. We consider this to be light, illumination, or revelation. That's what we get. That's the idea we get before we speed them down, before we slow them down. Okay. Psalm chapter 1. 119 verse 130. So, appear at Astano Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. You see? The word of God is supposed to be bringing light to us. And what do you see through light? I mean, what happens with What does light have you to, to see? Yes. Yeah. And then you get understanding. Understand, yes, yeah, to see, to see how God sees, what God sees. And that's why you read the Bible. That's why you have the word of God. That's why you pray. 
all those things you are to see into the another realm. And then you get committed to slow it down through understanding. He says the wisdom, by wisdom a house is built, that is by seeing. Wisdom, the eyes of the wise is in the head to see. Then, but understanding is what establishes it. That is now slowing it down to establish it now. Even though you have received light or an or revelation to what God is doing or saying, it is not enough to just reveal in revel in the fact that you have seen or had the Father. You we must slow down that God's thought even further to make it an earthly realm reality. Is that okay for you? Yes. Okay. You all got that? Yeah. Is testing prophets is something we uh, think together is, is for the kingdom of God. The prophecy? When we are testing prophecies, for example. When we are testing prophecy. Yeah, it's something we together are thinking is the, is the right direction. Is it bringing the kingdom down? Yes, it's to bring the kingdom down. Yeah. It's for the purpose of bringing the kingdom down. You have the responsibility of doing spiritual exercises with the help of the Holy Spirit for the purpose of seeing something invisible, either through when you read the Bible or when you fellowship with God or when you practice God's uh, presence or when you pray or when you, yeah, you just observe nature, you know, with the help of the Holy Spirit for the purpose of seeing something invisible become visible. Once you have seen it, you then have the responsibility of slowing it down to become physical product or something tangible. We understand that still? Yes. Okay. Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Because the Father is the manifestation or the conversion of the Father. And this is because the Father is dwelling in a higher energy, the light, great light, unapproachable light. But he, Jesus, is the Condensed, or what do we call for the what did I use for the storm? I mean, the pregnancy for condensed. condensed, yeah, is the slowed energy of God that it, it has been slowed to the level of the earth energy, so the material energy, so that it could function here and reveal that God on our level, so that we could see him in physically tangible, like we from like we are supposed to function here. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Equation breakdown and practical application. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I will do this later on. <laughs> okay, let me let me allow you to freshen up before we come to this. But before we come to this, let me hear your uh, what do you call it? Your yeah, your thoughts. thoughts. Give the microphone over there. You can stand up, sir. Yes. So what have you taken from this morning session? From science perspective, yes. And in terms of modern advancement of technology, yes. Teletransportation, as exhibited today, yes. has been discovered in multimedia production. Beautiful. Where we do teleporting. So what I said that it might happen that the earth we will get to teletransportation so before Jesus comes back. You yes. are confirming that the science. Is moving closer to it now. Teleporting is in even computer games that we play. Oh, wow. Teleporting. Virtual reality. Mm. Yeah. Virtual reality. Virtual reality. Virtual reality. Yeah. You see what I was... I just sensed so that on my own. You said 5G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the realms of where you said you get to a place that you look at somebody and the person will know what you are saying. Yeah. yeah. Even Samsung phones, you can look at it whilst you are reading. It's rolling. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Whilst you are looking at it, you are reading. It is Some what? Samsung? Samsung Samsung. 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 You don't have to scroll. Wow. You look at it whilst you are reading. The page is scrolling for you. You see, that is where we are moving towards. Yeah. The speed level is increasing. That's what God that said, that the knowledge will increase. Yeah. It's all because of transfer of energy. Yeah. yeah. So even if you take your remote control and you indicate it to your TV and it changes anything, yes. you are radiating energy. Yes, wow. yes. So transmission of energy exactly. is transferring digital signals, which we will see as analog conversion. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Well said. Well said. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes. On two different occasions that I, I went to Nigeria, I, I saw something from some, some of our churches in Nigeria. And uh, initially, I was a little bit excited. I was happy about it. They are giving this kind of uh, medical help. I don't know whether anybody has observed that in Nigeria. They will invite some doctors to the church. They will test some people and give them some medical support. It's louder, louder. They will invite some doctors to the church. Yes. And they will be giving people some medical support. And yes. Testing and other those things. I discovered that because when some churches observed that, they started practicing like a drawing member. That they can use that to draw members, start <laughs> member for one church. To, like a competition. I saw that a lot of churches begin to do that. But after a while, I begin to, in, in my heart, I was feeling that something is wrong somewhere, that it's not, it's not proper. So today when uh, DSA was ministering, and I know why I was feeling uncomfortable, you see, because any kind of help that is just um, physical, how there, it does not really set people free. You see, they were not taught how to live from inside out. Some people have been Christian for 20 years, 30 years. They don't know how to receive. Live from the spirit. They don't know how wow. to live from the spirit, live from mm. inside out. People are not being taught how to live from spirit, it will live from the spirit, to live from inside out. They just go out, because somebody is giving them this kind of physical thing, everybody's running from one church to the other. That, that can never set people free until we're able to bring people to that place. Like we saw that lady say, even when people are free from drugs, she's not excited. And she's able to minister to them from the inside. So thank you so much for, for that, sir. Ah, amazing. Nizabuti Patom Vavrema Pereri Vapamiyat, he passed late next slide, he started. The, um, I, it, it comes to like the scripture that says, um, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Yes. Um, what this is doing to me is I'm seeing the ways of God through science. I'm seeing how like the ways of God is no longer a, um, it's not a mystery anymore. Mm. No, I, I can, it's like I'm getting closer to God just through this Knowledge. this teaching mm. i'm i'm seeing god through science i'm i'm getting to know him i'm see, i'm having a desire to even be close to the bible him. i'm seeing the bible come alive i mean this this teaching is, is so practical and you're teaching us how to operate in the spirit but at the same time be utterly useful mm. to be useful to 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 our surroundings i mean it's the stuff that was just hidden to me like even though even though like sometimes we do have um, spiritual experiences, but we, but, but now I understand it. Now I have a clearer understanding. It's like moving from the spirit to the earthly realm, converting the way conversion was, seeing how God converts and how He wants us to equally convert. Mm -hmm. So this teaching has been, I mean, this teaching has just has been mind blowing, and um, I want to thank God for the. Um, I just feel like just thanking God because this is, I mean, it's like I'm so privileged among all men on earth to hear this at this time in my life. I mean, I'm not hearing it. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm, it's like this is, this is something that I will never forget for the rest of my life. This, this is something that I just, like I said. It's I, laying a new foundation. Yes. It's like I'm beginning, life. it's like I'm beginning Christianity all over again. And I'm now going to begin to live the life that God originally intended. intended me to live. That the one I was living was just superficial. That the one I was just living was just... Conditioned like living. Yes, I was just living and God in his mercy. I, I just, I just, I just, all of this teaching is just breaking me down. To truly appreciate God for this awesome, awesome prayer. We are blessed to hear this level of teaching. Uh, um, it's, it's just, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just a short comment. I, I really appreciate these uh, spiritual dis disciplines, for example, because without this vision, it's just a spiritual way to live a misentered life. Mm. Yes. yes. Yes, thank you. Should I stand? Um, yes, sir.
Should I stand? Yeah, you can okay. stand. Yeah, um, DSA, I just want to say thank you very, very much. Um, there is no end to learning when someone is around you. Um, you know, sometimes I don't know. If, I don't know of other people, but uh, oh, can you come? No, okay. I believe to be okay. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> no, um, that's, ah, okay, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know of other people, but um, sometimes when I read the Bible and when I read the stories or in the Gospels and how Jesus walked with people, with his disciples, I some kind of like have this wish that oh, how I wish I was. Alive. around when mm. Jesus was there teaching his disciples. Mm. But just sitting down here and listening to you <laughs> teach and talk, I just, I don't know, I just lost that wish mm. that mm. I wish I was there because this is exactly what Jesus did with his disciples. Mm. I think basically when he sat down and was teaching them, pouring out his life, bringing out revelations from, and that's why I kept telling them that there are so many things I can tell you, but you cannot bear them now. So we are even privileged now that we are even hearing things that the disciples did not hear, because this is a higher level of revelation. You understand? So that, I just said, Lord, I just said thank you because I am here now, and I'm like in that atmosphere, Hmm. when Jesus was actually teaching his disciples. So I just want to say thank you, and I, I really bless God for, for the opportunity. Hmm. Uh, one other thing I wanted to say was when um, Dr. Anu was breaking down and demystifying the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the scripture, but um, something jumped out of that scripture to me personally, and I don't know, maybe it's my minister to us, you know, two, two things I noticed there. One was when the, when the Bible says, and the disciples, they, and they were afraid. And Jesus now said, do not be afraid. What ministered to me there was, those were two realms. Mm -hmm. Two realms. So basically, when the Bible and says, the and they were afraid, that. it means they were now operating in the physical realm, below the elements, mm. below the laws that govern this physical world. But Jesus had to change that realm by telling them, do not be afraid. That word he pronounced alone actually brought in a higher um, level or a higher realm. And that, uh, I believe, was the, um, he brought in that higher energy or that higher speed. So it means to me, basically, that whenever we are afraid, what we are doing is that we are putting ourselves under the elements and we are under control of the, the physical um, um, laws that, that govern. But if we are bold and we have faith, it means what we are doing, faith is taking us above that um, low... That low, yeah, um, and it's kind of raising our energy, like Dr. S um, Sunday said, and it means we will now be operating in a higher realm. And so that's, for me, that's what um, jumped out. And um, so many other things, but let me keep it. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you so much that this uh, program is being aired even to the world. Exposing and making us to get to the place where the Bible says that it is written that you might know. Mm -hmm. But people uh, try to make us not to know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I was looking at when you we were just exposing, uh, exposing us to these uh, verses of the Bible. And people were saying, ah, they, we are not being taught this by the, our daddies and uh, Jews. We see many of them that say they operate in, uh, in the power of the spirit. But I begin to wonder why they are not letting the followers know. 
But what I it seems to be in operation is the other side. And because it is on the other side they are coming from, they will not want anybody to know how they operate. Because I know if really it is from the Lord. They are operating with the spirit of the Lord. They will not be hiding <coughs> to let other people know about it. You are here. Everything you are doing, you are just exposing it to us. Mm -hmm. It's not a hidden thing. <laughs> and everyone that is hearing you is really can prove. Wait, wait, wait. They say your battery is not... They say they can't hear you. Mm -hmm. You will have to buy extra batteries. You will have to buy extra batteries. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, what I just said is that from what we have learned and what you have exposed us to, Many of the things that we are really thinking that those that are leading us previously were not exposing us to, they might not be coming from your own side. They might be coming from the opposite side. And because that is very sacred to them, they don't want to, they don't want to expose us to it. Because they know when they do that, many of us might come to the point of understanding that this is not of God. So that might be the reason. But we are very grateful that everyone is hearing you and you are so open because you know that the Lord has sent you to this world to build this kingdom and bring it to come to pass on this earth. Thank you so much. You can't hear? Yeah. The button is a rabbit. Right. The rabbit. Okay. She won't. God bless you, sir. As um, everybody was talking, Ephesians 3 just came to my spirit. And I'm reading it now. It's so long, so I, I will just encourage each and every one of us to find time to read the whole thing but because as I'm reading through it I'm just this is DSA pastor um, I said pastor uh, Paul of our times <laughs> you need to read the whole of Ephesians 3 to 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 see what I'm talking about but some of it which I will read is from um, verse 3 I know we have to so just verse 3 wait it's just talking about the revelation of the mystery that has been made known. Just as he wrote beforehand in brief, so that we may be able, when we read, to understand the insight into the mystery of Christ. And please, just read the whole thing. Because as I'm reading through every single verse, this is, this is what we're experiencing here now. This time of fellowship with DSA. And then when you now even carry on, prayer for spiritual strength, read through it again. Same thing. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Somebody is raising their hand there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, DC. Um, this, this teaching is, is really demystified some scriptures that used to puzzle my understanding in reading the scriptures. Like the amount of configuration. Well, uh, this um, teaching has really opened my eyes to understanding like uh, what our sister was mentioning, what Paul wrote in, in the Ephesians, opening the eyes of um, understanding. My, my eyes of understanding have been opened. Amen. About the Mount of Configuration, Elijah, Moses, Moses 
and all these other walking on the water and also sort of uh, Jesus walking through walls. <laughs> <laughs> so now all is now I can it's making now, sense. Yeah, it's making sense. And I can now sort of explain if someone uh, sort of asks me about it. And it's, it's making the Bible and the signs agree, which, which um, throws away all the arguments of atheism. Yes. Trying to say signs is, is disproves the Bible and all. It's the other way around. Mm. So, so, <laughs> so, so I, I'm really uh, excited about learning more and understanding mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. getting more light and revelation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for, for, Thank your, you, sir. Thank for you. your dedication. Thank you. Time is over? Yeah. Maybe Maria. Let's give Maria for the final. Yeah, let Maria, let Maria leave this a wisdom. <laughs> Also, no, there is a scripture that I saw in the screen. Oh, okay. Say the entrance of the word of God gives it light and understanding to the simple. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate me that simple? What is it talking about? The simplicity in us, the humbleness, the gentleness, or is it talking of the simplicity of the what no, do we call no, it? That, of, is, of that, the that is talking about the obedience, yes, yes. the humble, mm -hmm. and the one that is able to submit to the will of God and to the workings of God. The ability to submit yourself to his will, his direction, his leading, it is that simplicity. Yeah. Okay, Pastor, thank you. So that is, so that is where my, my question, question. comes. For we, for the Lord to reveal himself the way he's supposed to reveal himself, we have to be simple in spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay? Yeah.